Number 86. During a recent winter month in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, it was necessary to obtain 3,500 kilowatt hours of heat provided by a natural gas furnace with an 89% efficiency to keep a small house warm. And the efficiency of a gas furnace is the percent of the heat produced by combustion that is transferred into the house. So now we're focusing on letter E. It says, what volume of air is required to provide the oxygen for the combustion of the methane used to heat the house. And air contains 23% of oxygen by mass, and the average density of air during that month was 1.22 grams per liter. Okie dokie. So we are on uh, letter E, so maybe let me just get rid of this because let's just start from scratch. Maybe I'll get rid of this one as well. So we're on part eight already, which means that we did part A through D in the previous videos. So if you want to check those out, if you guys are on the playlist, it's only a couple of questions back. All right. So there's a couple of things that we did um, to basically get to where we're at. We did the balance equation. So that's done. Um, we have the delta H value for this reaction of methane, which is CH4. And then from this 3,500 kilowatt hour, with the 89% efficiency, we found out that the total heat that is required is 1.416 times 10 to the seventh kilojoules. So if you need a refresher, just go back to the previous questions and you know I'll, I'll tell you how to get these values here. But now let's just move forward. Now, basically, we want to find out what the volume of air is, but there is no air in this equation. The next best thing is that they're telling us that there's a connection between air and oxygen. And here is the oxygen in the balanced equation. So maybe I can find out what's going on with oxygen. Specifically, how many grams of oxygen I need or how much we need in order to produce 1.416 times 10 to the seventh kilojoules. So we're gonna focus on getting to oxygen, but we gotta start with what we're given. We're going to start with the total heat of the house and we're converting, right? Which means that we just make ratios. So let's, let's get it going. 1.416 times 10 to the seventh kilojoules. Now, if we're converting, remember it's always multiplied by a ratio. You throw the unit that you don't want. So that goes on the bottom. And now what num or what number, what unit are we going to use up here? Well, look for a ratio that has kilojoules in it. This is the only thing that I got, right? The negative 890.8 kilojoules per mole. So I can use this information. This is the delta H of this whole reaction. So I'm gonna put the negative 890.8 kilojoules on the bottom. Now technically, remember the negative just means that the heat is being released. There's no such thing as negative energy. So maybe I won't put it because we're not gonna get a negative amount of grams or moles. That doesn't make any sense. So the negative here just means that the heat is being released, but when you do your calculations, you don't have to put the negative in there. Mole goes on the top, and we're looking for oxygen because that's the connection between air and oxygen. Whoa. I don't know what just passed through my neighborhood. Something loud, but anyway, let's keep going. Mole of O2 on the top. Now just pay attention. What number is going to go here? It's the coefficient of the component that you're looking for. In this case, it's O2. And look, I have a two here now. So I have to put a two for the two moles of O2. Now my units cancel. And look, I'm at moles of O2. But basically, in order to use this connection, it says air contains 23% of oxygen by mass. So I have to go from moles of O2 to grams. Remember, a mass is grams. So we're almost there. Times by a ratio, mole of O2 on the bottom, gram of O2 on the top, right? And remember, gram to mole conversion of the same thing is the periodic table. Periodic table, there's always one mole, right? And then just add up what O2 is. 16 times 2 is 32. So I'll just put 32 and the moles cancel out. And now you're left with grams. So let's see how many grams of oxygen uh, do I need here? I'm just gonna get calci. And let's see, I'm gonna do the 
1.416 times 10 to the 7th times 2 divided by 890.8 .8 times 32. A lot of grams, but that kind of makes sense. Maybe I will cut it off after a couple of numbers. 1.017. Maybe I'll just say 1.0173 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep. And that's grams of O2. Okay. But we need to basically take this amount and say how much air we have because they want to know the volume of air. They don't want to know the volume of oxygen, but they did tell me that air contains 23% of oxygen. So that means if air is the whole entire thing, it's 100%, 23% of air is oxygen. So I can make like a little ratio, right? A percent ratio. No, like part over whole, right? So I can say 23 equals something over something else times 100. That's the general formula, right, for a percentage. And it's part divided by whole. Well, in this case, the part is the O2, and the whole is the air, right? So if I could just erase this, the part would be the 1.0173 times 10 to the sixth, and we're solving for x on the bottom. So we just divide by 100, divide by 100 on both sides. So I get 0 0.23 equals x times 1.0173 times 10 to the sixth. And then cross multiply, right? This x will come up here. And then you're basically just doing your division, right? So if I just swap these guys, it would basically be 1.073 times 10 to the 6 divided by 0.23. And we're almost there. So let's see. We get 1.0173 times 10 to the 6 divided by 0.23. And we get even a bigger number. But that makes sense. So 4.423 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's now grams of the air. Okay. Almost there. They still asked for the volume. But now we have the mass. Right? We have the mass of the air. And what they give us? Oh, they gave me the density of the air. Right? And the density equals mass divided by volume. So that's the connection between... Um, grams and the volume. So let's see if I maybe just put this over here. I think I, I could fit it over here. So remember our formula, right? D equals M over V. Now, if I just rearrange this formula to solve for volume, it would be volume equals M over D. So I'm just going to do that just to save a little space. Volume equals mass over density. So all we have to do is take the uh, the mass, which was this big number, 4.423 times 10 to the 6, and divide it by the density. They told me that the density was 1.22. And I'm just double checking, right? They do give me a gram for the unit of mass, so that checks out. And now, let's see what we get. 4.423 times 10 to the 6 divided by 1.22. I get a lot of liters. They didn't say what volume to leave it in, right? They just said what volume of air. I'm just making sure. Yeah, so I'll leave it in liters. I'll put it over here, guys. Um, looks like maybe two sig figs, three sig figs. I don't really care about sig figs. We'll say 3.6. 3.6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that is in liters, because that's your volume. And there you go. What's the volume of air? 3.6 times 10 to the 6 liters. Crazy. All right? So hopefully this helped. I think we got a couple of more parts, which I, I think I'm going to do in the last video. So just hang tight. 
uh, we will get there. All right. So just hang tight and I'll see you in a few. All right. See you then. Bye.